It's now 7.05, everybody. And as you know, today is DWD Dialogue with the Doctor. So we're going to go ahead and get started so that she can have all the time she needs. Because, you know, she always comes extra prepared for us. And so uh, I'm going to open us up in prayer, do a few little housekeeping, and then it will be DWD. And what's up, Jackie? Uh, let's pray. Lord, we just come tonight. We thank you again for another uh, gathering together of Cafe Mana. We thank you for everyone who's on Zoom, everyone who is on Facebook, and even those who will join us on demand. We pray, God, that you would just bless tonight's Cafe Mana session, bless Latanya as she facilitates uh, the dialogue with the doctor, and we just pray, as always, that it will be a time of fellowship, of fun, uh, and of uh, uh, conversation that edifies us and builds us up. And we give your name, the honor, glory, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. So again, 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 if you have not, please go to hotsministries.com and sign up for our email list. Uh, also, for everyone who is on Facebook, please share this on your Facebook page. If you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel on YouTube, it's IC Hayes. Uh, please do that. And of course, invite others to join Cafe Mana. And uh, one of the things I wanted to share uh, to Gail's point is just a rule of thumb that I have, a general rule of thumb is that I don't open anything that comes to me uh, through Facebook Messenger. So I know sometimes some of you may send me videos and things like that. Uh, and, and because I just don't trust uh, social media like that. I don't open and watch those videos and links uh, because for whatever reason on Facebook, you can have multiple people with the same name. So somebody right now can open an account called Isaac Hayes, you know, save my pictures to their computer and then upload my pictures and you all might mistake me for them. And so that's why I just strongly encourage everyone uh, call the person, text them, email them before you click on anything in social media uh, so that you don't pick up a virus or, or anything like that, get hacked and so forth. So just because they say Isaac or Gail or Latanya don't mean it's them, right? Uh, so even now, one of the things I do, if I get a new friend request from Gerald Moore, so like I, I thought I was already friends with Gerald. So I go and I search. I said, all right, I'm already friends. I'm not accepting this request. Now, some of us do forget our passwords, right? And so we have to create new accounts. I get that too. But my point is follow the advice of one of America's presidents, trust, but verify. <laughs> and so with that, I am going to turn it over to uh, our facilitator for tonight, Latanya, also known as Dr. Hayes. And so let's give it up for Dialogue with the Doctor. Hello, Cafe family. Excited to see everyone on tonight. So what I always do is revert back. It's been 30 days since I've given you guys a challenge, a resilience challenge. So right now, I just want to know, is there anybody who had an opportunity to look over the resilience challenge. If you started it, took it, what was your thought about it? If you wanna give us some feedback, what did you think? Do you feel like, yep, definitely gotta have some resilience cause seem like things are still kind of going on a little tough, but does anybody wanna share? Resilience, we have to be resilient. I believe, I think we all said that because we are still facing quite a bit of things uh, now. And so we need to just be resilient. I gave you guys a challenge, look through it. You've supposed to have been like uh, fortifying yourselves. Anybody, anybody. If no, then that's not a problem either. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to actually take a look at that resilience challenge, give yourself some time, take a look at it, uh, and then, you know, use it, challenge yourself, prepare yourself, get yourself uh, fortified. All right. 
So the next thing I have on my list is just right now what's happening with the uh, Russia Ukraine concern. So I just wanted to give us a small space just to hear what's on your mind. You know, if we were in a group session, that's what I would say to the group. Hey, you know what? This is what's happening. We're all somewhat feeling this. So this is just a time to kind of sit back and just, you know, just what's on your mind. Is it something that make, make you think like, wow, you know, can't believe this happening. I know we mentioned this a few times on the, um, on this platform that should we be concerned uh, now that it's actually happening? Like what's on your mind? Is it making you think like, hmm, maybe I need to be prepared for something? Is it making you think like, how can we have a war? Could it actually really impact us bigger than uh, what it is now? Um, you know, we're hearing on the news right now, you know, the gas, the food, all these other things are, you know, going to impact us. You know, is there something that maybe we need to be uh, trying to consider? Maybe it's not driving all over the place right now. You know, if I don't need to go there, maybe I shouldn't be driving because I want to save for gas because I don't know what the gas is going to keep hiking up to. Maybe uh, Isaac and I, we sure rise now. You know, it's, it's things that you may just start thinking about, like in preparation. And one thing about a preparation, even when uh, God would give warning through the prophets, he's telling them, you still have to give the people the warning. And it's, there was another um, place in the scripture where it says, if you don't warn, then woe to you who didn't warn. And why are you getting a warning? To prepare, right? So is there something that uh, you're thinking? Anyone? What's on your minds? I'll start this off. Uh, I know the Lord said, don't be anxious for anything, <clears throat> but I am really becoming very anxious after listening mm -hmm. to the news this afternoon that mm -hmm. Putin has now taken on um, the Chernobyl uh, nuclear. Mm -hmm. I mean, that mm -hmm. is, I mean, from the uh, Ukraine, that's what he was after all along. I mean, even though, you know, Russia has its own, a nuclear uh, center and, and, and devices and those kinds of things, but he's now taken over um, the Chernobyl nuclear uh, center in Ukraine that was being safeguarded by the United States and and some of the uh, the other countries, uh, free countries in the world, and it is truly making me extremely uh, nervous because we have a madman on our hands with Putin. And the uh, speech that he made a few days ago uh, saying that if the United States retaliated with what he was doing with Ukraine, um, he would unleash something that uh, worse than anyone has ever seen. So I don't know about any of you, but that is really scary. And so that affects our mental health. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? And yes, it's going it to get worse before it gets better because our media and our news and all the stations are bombarding us with all of this. I mean, CNN, MSNBC, all the network channels, all through the day into the evening, all the way to midnight, they're just repeating this stuff over and over and over again. So that's my concern and that's my fear. And, uh, President Biden is between a rock and a hard place uh, because we're dealing with something that we've never done before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so absolutely. Um, having the feelings that you have is legitimate. It's not, God didn't say that we wouldn't have uh, fear and anxiety. This is why he says, <laughs> fear not because he knew we would. Or he says, cast our cares upon him because he knew we would have anxiety and care. So this is why he gave us an outlet or a way to uh, cast those cares. The thing is that, yeah, it, humanly, it, we're naturally, we don't know what will happen, but we do know <laughs> who's going to take care of us. And then the other, in the other concept is, uh, as you mentioned, we're being bombarded with all this news. My thought is, if it wasn't such a big deal, they wouldn't be telling us. You know what I'm saying? It, because there's been other wars going on all along. I was hearing about another one that was like in 2018 or 17. I didn't even know nothing about it. You know, but because they're sharing the information with us, I think it's letting us know we can be affected. One thing that Isaac mentioned was um, 
the Facebook, you know, how people are hacking. I know that what I have been hearing is that there may be some more cyber things that Putin may have uh, go out because, you know, he affected our uh, our elections. He was able to get uh, the emails from the other vice president, you know, well, the one that was running for president, Hillary, but, you know, he has that reach. But for us, it's really paying attention. It's like being on alert when it comes to our email, when it comes to our phones, when it comes to our computers, when it comes to those things. Like these are the things that we need to really pay attention to our money, you know, in our banks, you know, what's happening in that regard. Uh, people's bank accounts have been <laughs> affected. We don't know where it's coming from, but it's still, it gives people an opportunity to start doing those things. But in the, but in the same token, it's saying, God, we know that you still have our backs. It, you knew that this was going to happen before we knew it was going to happen. And yet you still told us that uh, we can rest and trust in you when we have those moments that where we feel like we're, we're not in control, which is something that we're not, but God is. Anyone else want to chime in? Um, Dr. Hayes, um, I, I definitely uh, uh, agree with you and Gail. One thing is that um, if, you're, if you're really not concerned, like you said, all you have to do is listen to the news. The, 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 you know, it's, 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 that's, 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 that's the only topic. And, at, and on, on every channel, on every uh, news network, by the time you listen to all that, you will be you will be concerned, and that, and and on our human side, mm -hmm. we will be we will we will be concerned. And um, the part about being hacked is definitely. Um, I got this got this message, and I know Gerald has had it on her phone through Messenger, and it says, "Guess who died?" Well, if you open it up, it goes to up to your contacts. All you have to do is try to open it up and it goes through all your contacts. So every time somebody opens that up, it, it, it's just a triple effect. It's just hacking on all of your, you know, your contacts. So there are a lot of hacking going on and, and other things. So it's definitely, you gotta, you, you have to check things. You, you have to, you, you, you just, you have to be, you have to be on board. You have to be conscious. You have to pay attention to what's going on because yes, this will affect us in many ways. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. I just okay. add something too, if you don't mind. Yes, uh, and then really, and no, if someone else want to go ahead. Did you want to call on someone else? Uh get well then Crystal and then Gerald, and then we'll come back to you, Gail. Okay. I was just in agreement. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. I was just in, uh, in agreement with everyone so far. Um, but I just, when I see what's going on, first of all, I know it lasts with the Bible. Uh, wars, almost of wars. All uh, this has to be fulfilled. Um, it's easy to get caught up um, mm -hmm. to the point of anxiety. Mm -hmm. However, we have to intentionally um, be prayerful, you know, knowing that it's in God's hands. Because even on our land, we have so much going on. You turn the news on, it was already consuming before yeah. this, right here at home. So to pack that on, um, you have to be conscious and, and wonder how this is going to affect us. And I was kind of going online seeing uh, what do we depend on uh, from that area and knowing how this would affect us. It made me want to, whatever it was, let's say if it was whatever, batteries, whatever, get it. You know, pick up some extra this, some extra that. However, we affect it. That that's what uh it propelled me to do. Mm -hmm. Um, the other part of that was the Ukrainian community here. So imagine if our family was there, how they must feel. Mm -hmm. The ones mm -hmm. here that uh the ones there are first, but the ones here that 
helpless, hopeless. Their their loved ones is there, you know, and it it made me feel like what what can we do here to help them uh, mm-hmm. that are, are directly uh, impacted by this this crisis. So that's that's where my mind went. It went, uh, and of course, everything goes back to prayer because you can't yeah. in your yeah. in your human ability do a whole lot. So intentionally, with all the intent in you, you have to kind of go back to that one thing, and that's prayer, and that's what God wants yeah. us because Amen. it's going to affect us some kind of way. Gas, food, uh, our shipment is already all over the place. So it's going to affect us. And then while that's going on, we still have the um, protest with, um, with the uh, vaccination. We're not going to get the vaccination. You can't mandate us. So you got wars and rumors of wars there here, locally and nationally. It's a lot. You, we can't consume it. We can't. Okay. So I hear you saying prayer and preparation. All right, Jill. I was going to say what this is causing me to do. Everyone knows me knows I didn't even get on Facebook to uh, just a few years ago because I said, no, you all are not my friends. I don't even know you and you don't know me. And so I and my profile is is like next to nothing. <laughs> I I didn't even get on until I did. I uh, got went to Women's Journey, and <laughs> a evangelist Lashandra signed me. You know, set it up. And I said, uh, okay, but. And having said that, now my feeling is now it's going to cause me to retreat again, you know, to because I'm can be a little antisocial. <laughs> uh, and so shut up, Gail. <laughs> and so a um, uh, little introvert. So I'm, uh, you know, just being here is a whole lot <laughs> for, for me being mm-hmm. on this on this platform. But you are, uh, I know you to be children of God, and and the trust is, is there. But uh, yeah, the, you saw it took me a while to come over <laughs> uh, live mm-hmm. here. So mm-hmm. I know that, you know, I, I think, yes, this is all in, in the Lord's plan. Uh, it, it didn't take him by surprise. It didn't, it, it didn't happen yesterday in his mind or, you know, uh, so we just have to trust. I hate to see we just pulled out last summer out of one war and now here we are because I my thought is that he really would Putin really would like to start the war with with the U.S. that that's where he'd like to go and he'll get there in whatever manner he can so uh yeah it, you know I just have to breathe and and know yeah. that it is the future <laughs> yes <laughs> The future so is in the Lord's hands and, yes. and right and breathe. So and breathe. Amen. Because that is one good thing when it comes to anxiety. You breathe in, you count, and you breathe out, you count. So count for two yes. in and count 10 out, right? Just right. to get that out of here. And be grounded. Like you say, the future is in God's hand. You have some place to know where I'm not in control, but God is in control. Michelle. You guys just took what I was just about to say. <laughs> um, it's, you know, um, I, no, you, no, that's fine. I agree with everybody 100% on this, uh, in this meeting tonight. And bottom line is, is still God is in control and we have to draw closer to God. 
All right. Well, thank you all. So we were able to do a small group process. Look at that. Got to see me in action. So, um, but one thing we're going to definitely intentionally allow ourselves is to know that God is in control. He, he knew this was going to happen. He gave us what we need when we do have anxiety, when we do have excessive worrying. He told us to cast our cares upon him for he cares for us, right? And he also gave us prayer. Prayer is like catharsis because you should be talking. You're speaking to the Lord God. You know what? I, I know that uh, Ukraine and um Russia in this battle, I know that it may affect uh, the batteries, it may affect the metals, it may affect uh, well, the gas, it may affect, you know, certain things. It's just talking to him about it, but I know you've always provided for me when I didn't see how I was going to have this, you bring up something that he did give you uh, a way to uh, make it through and you bring your, bring it back, that back up where you have your evidence and your facts and you keep it moving. All right, and then go back to that resilience challenge because in that challenge, remember, we talked about some scriptures there. We talked about what we need to do to keep our hope uh, strong and what we need to do when we're in a constant um, uh, moment where things are not changing yet, that things where we still have, you know, as Crystal said, wow, we already had issues that we were dealing with at home, you know, with the, with the violence, with the uh, uh, the policing things with all the other stuff, the masking and all that. Now this, so that's just saying we definitely have to be resilient. All right, people, we're shifting gears, gears here. So this is one of my favorite months. It's not just because God decided to let me be born in this month. That's not only one reason why I like this month. The second reason I like this month is because it's Black History Month. So I'm sure you guys have heard my husband say, oh my God, when February comes, my wife, she's pulling up roots. She's pulling up all those old uh, Black stories or whatever. She's going to listen to them all. So yeah, that's me. I start February 1st. I get, get on the road, get my popcorn ready. If I get a break at lunchtime, I'm watching some movie or some kind of PBS, some PBS or dial something documentary. Well, I just wanted to bring up to you guys, since it is still Black History Month, is did you know Black inventors? So I'm just going to rally through this to see, did you know this? Did you know Dr. Shirley Jackson, her experiments with theoretical physics paved the way for numerous developments in the telecommunication space, including the touch tone, telephone, the portable fax, caller ID, call waiting, and the fiber optic cable. Black lady, Dr. Shirley Jackson. Did you know Marie Van Britten Brown? Although she was a full-time nurse, she recognized the security threats to her home and devised a system that would alert her of strangers at her door and contact relevant authorities as quickly as possible. Her original invention consisted of peepholes, a camera, monitor, and a two-way microphone. The finishing touch was an alarm button that when pressed would immediately contact the police. Her patent laid the groundwork for the modern closed circuits television system that is widely used for surveillance, home security system, push button alarm triggers, crime prevention, and traffic monitoring. Did you guys know that about Marie Van Britten Brown, black lady? All right, let's move it on down. Lonnie G. Johnson, he uh, is a man that gave us the most famous water gun. The super soaker. Do you guys remember the super soaker super with the kids and you soak them with that game of you know, the water? Yeah, this man, Lonnie G. Johnson, he gave that to us. Uh, he wasn't a toy maker. He was actually an aerospace engineer for NASA with a, res with a resume um, boasting and stint with the United States Air Force with the Galileo Ju Jupiter probe and the Mars Observer Project and more and more than 40 patents. Lonnie, he had more than 40 patents. Black, these people are still alive. All right, Marianne R. Croak. Mary Ann is a SVP at AT&T, serves as a mentor for women in AT&T labs and sits on the board for Holocaust, Genocide and Human Rights Education Center. 
Koch holds over 135 patents, primarily in voice over internet protocol, the VOIP, you all. Some in other areas, she has another 100 patents currently under review. Look at that, Marion R. Croak. All right, let's go to some sisters. Mary and Mildred David Davidson. Mary and her sister Mildred had many practical inventions. They didn't have technical education, but they were both exceptional at spotting ways to make people's lives better. They invented the sanitary belt. Later, Mary invented the moisture resistant packet for the belt. While disabled from multiple sclerosis, Mary went on to invent the walker and the toilet tissue holder. Did you know that? Y'all didn't know that? <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> well, isn't that amazing how, you know, we, most of the time when we're looking at Black history stuff, we go way back to 1932. So-and-so did the, the peanut butter and the peanut and the surgery and the, the three, the lights right? Those three, the red light, the lights and whatever. But I'm like, oh my God, are we not doing something today? Because every time, every year I go through and watch Black history stuff, they don't bring this stuff up. I have to Google it. But you didn't know, but guess what? Now you know. Black History Month. All right. Somebody clap for that. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, people. We're moving on. So the other thing about this month, we really didn't touch on it. I don't think so, but it was Valentine's Day this month, right? In this month, 14th, whatever. So love, right? So guess what? I got a love quiz for you all. All right. So it's the Bible love quiz. And I think we're, I'm waiting on you, my love. All right, so the first one, God's greatest act of love, and these are all true or false, as you all can see, God's greatest act of love was the giving of himself through his son. Is that true or is that false? Second one, love beareth, believeth, and hope. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why don't we let you do the poll part, please? True. Y'all can't Oops. select. It's not letting y'all do the poll. That's us select, but it doesn't let us uh, submit. It's not letting you submit. All right, this thing is. All right. And I do it until they you complete them all. Uh oh, what happened? Okay, I didn't get a chance. I was able. I was able to select. You was able to select. Okay. Yeah. Yes. All right. Are you putting it back up? We Let didn't me, get. I'm gonna pull it back up. Are we doing? I thought some of you all were having challenges. So. Um, Are we answering all of them or one at a time? Uh, well, the judge you took you, uh, Isaac. Go ahead, because I can't you. see what you all can see. Evidently. Um, okay, so let's just go one by one. So God's greatest act of love was the giving of himself through his son. True or false? Just answer. What do you all think? True. 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 All right. It's true. Of the next course. One. <laughs> love beareth, <laughs> believeth, and hopeth most things. Is that true or false? False. False. Most all things. All righty. Number three, it was false. Number three, love requires us to act in deed and truth, not just in words. Is that true or false? True. 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 All right. That is true. The next one, God love will help us to overcome fear. Is that true? True. 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 Because he did not give us the spirit of fear. Fear. Right, but um, yeah, right, right. there we go. All right, I got a hundred. 
You got hundred. We can we still we have, we not even finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> Along with power and a sound mind, God has given us His love to overcome fear. True. 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 Yeah. It's true. Faith is the bond of perfectness. True or false? I don't even yeah. see the questions anymore. Uh, oh, no. scroll, scroll, scroll down. Your, scroll down. Yeah, Krista, you have to scroll. Oh, I got it. Computer. I got it. I don't know how to. I don't know how to uh, get this uh, computer right. Okay, I got it. I got it. I got it. Okay, I got it. Okay. All right. So faith is the bond of perfection. <laughs> is that true or false? What numbers? What numbers that? Six and seven. Well, it's seven. Okay, twice. Faith, is seven. Six and seven. faith is the bond of oh, perfect the bond of perfectness. I would say true. Yeah, it's Anybody in there. It's just worded different. True. True. All right. I don't see any difference. Anybody else? It's false. Go to Colossians 3 and 14. Right. That's false. All because right. Let's go to the next. Basis, so, yeah. The love Seven of God. is the same question. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, six and trick. seven. Mm -hmm. Let's keep so, it moving. So you're gonna go to number eight on the quiz, even though let's go to number eight. Number Alone, <laughs> the love of God is experienced by us through the Holy Spirit. I would say yes. I would say true. yes. True. I would say true. 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 Next one is. Difficult times in our life can separate us from the love of Christ. Wow. Wow. He says wow. nothing can separate us. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. That's right. I nothing. Wanna... Praise All right, God. everybody. Nothing. nothing. That's right. The next one. Stephen cursed his persecutors as they stoned him to death. True or false? False. 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 Good, good, good. False. Is that All right, hold on. Time. Right. I have to... Um... Oh, what Pull happened? up the next thing. Now, I didn't but... get the answer. Okay. Answer. All right. Now y'all can keep it Bottom. moving. Keep it moving. Part two. Part two. Okay. We should love we should neighbors. take care of ourselves and then love our neighbors. True or false? False. 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 Love our neighbors. We love ourselves. Equally. We should. Okay. All right. It's false. All right, next. Being spiritual is more important than love. False. 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 I, don't, mm -mm. I think that's false. Yeah, nothing false. is, more, nothing is more important than love. That's right. All right. We are to love others as Christ has loved us. Yes. True. Yes. True. Yes. That's yes. true. Yes. The love we show towards our brothers and sisters covers sin. Yes. What? Um, the I'm love gonna, we show towards mm. our brothers and sisters covers sin. No. No. Uh-uh. I don't no think so. No. Maybe no one. I mean, no. Uh-uh. No. Uh -uh. no. Boss. So the, the answer is true. The love we show <laughs> towards our brothers and sisters covers sin. Love covers a multitude of, of sin. sin. Oh, that's right. That's right. I remember. First that. Peter so, four and eight. so that's true. Multitude that is true. Uh, First Peter four and eight. Yeah, yeah. All right. Let's keep it moving. The message throughout the Bible has been that we should love one another. True or true. false? True. That's true. 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 All right. If we don't love, then we don't know God. Is that true or false? That's true. That's true. 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 Oh, God, is, that's God, is God is love. All right. Well, that will set you free. All right. Yes, it will. <laughs> all right. So you all just did the love quiz. Okay. So we're going to move on into how much time I have? How much time I have? It's 40. Uh, all right. So we're going to roll on. Keep it rolling. I feel like I'm doing a whole lot here. 
You are. All right. So great. We're, <laughs> we're gonna go into so loved. Our topic is so loved. And our scripture is for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but what? Everybody have everlasting, everlasting life. 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 And then that's um, 1 John 3.16. And then, uh, no, John 3.16. And then 1 John 4, 7 and 8 says, Beloved, <laughs> let us love one him. another. For love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. That was in the King James. I'm going to read off the AMP. It says, beloved, let us unselfishly love and seek the best for one another. For love is from God, and everyone who loves others is born of God and knows God through personal experience. The one who does not love has not become acquainted with God, does not, and never did know him. Hmm, interesting. For God is love. He is the originator of love, and it is in, and it is an enduring attribute of his nature. So with those two scriptures that I just read to you, it admonished us to demonstrate a love that gives. If anybody calls my personal phone and get my voicemail, <laughs> it said, um, God so loved, so he gave, so be a giver today. So it's something like that. It's like reminding that if we're going to be and do what God does, then we have to give in some kind of capacity. And the one good thing about love is we went through the love quiz is that love is given to us from God, right? So it's an attribute. It is, I say it's divinely given. I always say it's, you know, the fruit of the spirit is, you know, love, joy, you know, it's, it's something that's given right off the bat. Once we, once we accept Christ, he gives that to us. A lot of times we want to uh, say, well, I can't love because somebody's not loving me. Well, no, God is saying, I've imputed love in you. It's a divinely given thing. So what I gave you, I want you to take that love and I want you to allow that love to come out and to do, do something for others. Because when we, we're giving out to others, that love does something for us. Um, I already said love is, divinely, is a divinely attribute from the Holy Spirit. So I'll begin to look up love and see how it related to our mental health. So the role of love and mental health help us to keep faith with life at times of overwhelming psychological confusion and sorrow. Love, whether from a friend, a partner, an offspring, a parent, has an indomitable power to rescue us from mental illness. Isn't that interesting? When we are able to receive love, from this psychological mental health aspect is saying it helps us in our mental capacity. The other, the flip side of that is when we're giving out love, it also helps us. And Crystal touched on that when she mentioned, well, yeah, there's some anxiety going on, but what I begin to think about are the people who live here in the United States who have family members in Ukraine. So what can I do to help them? You know, how are they feeling? You know, even though, yeah, we're still affected in some regards, but they're affected even the more so. So now she says, well, hey, you know what? Maybe I should think about them, which helps me to give love or care. I will begin to pray. I'm gonna take some time and say, God, bless them, help them, help their family. It could also be if you had some kind of tangible ability to help them in that sense, you would help. So it, it gives us an opportunity to help us take our minds off of our immediate to give our minds a break to give to someone else. Love turns out to be the guiding strand running through the onset of and recovery from our worst episodes of mental unwellness. 
love. Love can lower the risk factors that can negatively impact our mental health, such as reducing anxiety, nervousness or worry, lowering our chance of developing depression or other forms of mental illness. That's love. That's what love can do. Love helps us. It's, it's even um, endorphins in, in our bodies too. It's like when you feel good, it's just like having love and having that joy. Have you ever just woken up in the morning and felt just so alive and just happy with joy and love, you know, and just uh, letting it be there? And, and on the flip side, have you just woken up and just was down and sad for no reason? Like, what the heck? What happened? I haven't even started the day. You know, why am I feeling this way? You know, which lets us know we can choose how we want to feel. We can choose that. Because here's the thing. The awesome part of it, if it's divinely given to us, that's number one. There's always a reason to be loving or to feel love every single day or every aspect of the day, even when you can't pay your bills, even when you can't get people to understand what you're going through, even when you try to talk to your spouse and you explain over and over and over, no pun, Isaac, uh, what you're feeling, they, they just can't get it. Can't. It doesn't matter. There is still a way to tap in God in his awesome design of our bodies, our minds, our core, our souls, and our spirits created that for us. If we just go through some examples, we think about Paul and Silas, they in jail, but they up here singing and praising in the midst of, because they tapped into something that was sitting right there with them in the midst of what they were experiencing. So it doesn't even matter what we're dealing with. And it, and it doesn't mean that what we're dealing with is not real or reality. They were sitting in reality. They were in jail <laughs> without no bail. They put it like that. It was a true reality. It's one thing to say, oh, I'm going to pretend it doesn't happen. I'm going to speak those things as though it were. It's not real. No, it is real. You speak that it is real, but we still have a real God who gave us a real uh, ability to tap into a real joy and a real peace, a real understanding in the midst of a real situation. I feel like I just preached there for some reason. I don't know. But what we want to do is, you all laughing at me. That's okay. That's joy. So we want to continue to allow love since this is almost the last week of love, but you all know it don't end here <laughs> because God so love, right? He want us to do the same thing. So this is just a way for us to really tell, oh my God, my time is flying. But I think I actually went through everything. So what we really wanna do is really find a time to allow the love that's already inside of us to be able to, um, expand beyond us and to share uh, for other people. So my challenge is going to be this, love, L-O-V-E, what's L, live, what's O, out, what's V, vivacious, what's E, energy. Live out vivacious energy, you all. What's vivacious? I looked it up. Of course, it's full of life. It means to live. <laughs> it means to be joyful. So live out vivacious energy. Share it. Give it out. When you wake up in the morning, you feel heavy. Say, uh-uh, not happening today. I have a reason to smile. It's not just that I woke up this morning and I got the activities of my limbs. Because some people wake up and had the activity of their limbs. They're like, oh, my God, I got I got that. I, I woke up into something that I don't even want to deal with. No. It's bigger than that. No, I woke up with an opportunity and a chance to experience God's grace in this day, his patience in this day, his mercy in this day, his love in this day, his benefits. Remember, his benefits are new every day for us. New benefits every single day. That's joy right there. That's a reason to have love right there. And the other side of this love is, of course, giving out. When I was looking this up from a mental health perspective, it was sharing how that when we can love other people who are struggling and having a hard time, you know, we can be unconditional uh, towards them. We can give them non-judgmental um, 
uh, support. We can be loyal to them. We can give them some reassurance and some patience. We can always just um, accept them for who they are and also have an independence of mind. For example, let me just give you an example. There could be somebody in your family, let's say for example, who uh, constantly gets in trouble um, they know they're getting in trouble, but it seems like they're like in a spiral. They can't seem to get out, can't figure out how to get out of this cycle. They're just in and in this. It's, it's just, it's, it's, it's not good. It's affecting other people in the family, other people cutting them off, like forget it. They need to do better. What's happening? So let's say now this person says, you know what? I'm tired of this. I don't want to be like this anymore. I want to, I want to get myself together. And they reach out to you and you're like, huh? Wait a minute, aren't you the one who took my <laughs> so and so and so stole it and sold it or whatever, right? But then you say, no, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show forth love. I'm going to believe that you want to change and you want this help because this person is struggling. Believe me, when people are in those cycles, they are struggling. They really are. Uh, you just have to have wisdom and set some boundaries, though. But um, you say, okay, I'll, I'm going to give you some unconditional love. What that means is I'm going to be here and give you that space, support you while you work on what it is you need to do. I can be an accountability person for you. In that accountability, I'm not judging you. What I'm doing, I'm being loyal because you can keep calling me when you feel yourself uh, being overwhelmed. I'm going to say, hey, stick with the goal. You say you want to change. You say you want to do something different. Remember what, what you said. You can do this. I'm here for you. Um, you giving them that reassurance. You're being patient because you have to be patient because uh, that person is struggling and they're trying to change and they will sometimes slip back and then they'll slip forward. But you, you know, and that patience. Uh, and then just saying, hey, somebody in the family say, I can't believe you helping so-and-so or you, you know, giving so-and-so this. You don't bother about what they think because God didn't give them the assignment. He gave it to you. And so you say, okay, I understand that you don't understand. And that's understandable. <laughs> but I'm going on, right? So that's kind of where we want to go. So my challenge to you is this, live out vivacious energy live it out people live it out we have to we have to joy in the midst of sorrow joy in the midst of confusion joy and love and show forth kindness to somebody say hello good morning how are you you know just share let it let that energy you know pass to other people and i think i am done it's 7:52 i said a lot today we did a lot of stuff all right. So would you close this in prayer, please? You know, are you going to do the prayer for hmm? the end of your session? Would you close us out in the prayer? Sure, absolutely. So let me go ahead and begin to pray. I'm going to try to look at the chat as I pray to see if there's any prayer requests that's going to be added. So Heavenly Father, first of all, we give you glory and honor. We thank you for this day, February the 24th, 2022, a day that you created, a day that you made, a day that you knew would exist, God. Well, we know in our, in our lives and in this world, there will be wars and famines and earthquake and snowstorms and all kinds of things happening, God, but there will also be love and joy and doors open and opportunities made ways and healing and, and comfort, God, and surprise uh, 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 outcomes. Uh, like we heard last week of someone saying, oh my God, I did taxes and didn't have to owe. You know, God, we know there are always things that you're doing. All There's things that's happening, but yet your hand of mercy and your love is still manifested. Help us to look at those things, God, as we continue to see the other ones. Let us not let the scale be so weighty that we're overwhelmed with the news. Not that we're not uh, taking the news and not hearing the news, God, but we're taking the news to prepare ourselves, to hear what you want us to do as we pray to you, God, how, how should we prepare? What should we do? That we listen for the Holy Spirit's guidance because you said you'd give us the Holy Spirit for it to lead and guide us into every single truth. There's a truth about the situation that we're in now, and we're asking, God, that you would let us hear it keenly, give us wisdom and knowledge. Lord, continue to bless and keep, keep us strong, God. Continue to bless, Lord God, 
everyone that's on this call, continue to provide for them the things that they need. God, we asking that you will be able to uh, give strength for those who have lost loved ones and still feeling the, the weight of it, God, and the grief of it, Lord. We know that you said that um, we can cast our cares upon you, God, and that you are the comforter, Lord. But even in the midst of that, there is a time of, of comfort. There are moments where there are setbacks and the grief gets heavy, God. Lord, let them know and let them find a way, God, to smile or, or towards that, that member or that loved one, God, to remember something good, Lord, even in the midst of thinking about losing or not having that person still around. Lord, you're able to do that. Lord, you know how to do it and you do it best. God, we just ask that you will continue to just bless those that uh, are in Ukraine and everyone that's affected by uh, what's happening. Even God, we ask that you touch Putin, Lord. We know that there's something that he's struggling with, God. And for him to have to be so aggressive, whatever this is that he feels he wants, whatever resources he's trying to get, Lord, we know that he can get these things from a peaceable way. And we're asking that you touch. And Lord, we just ask that you continue to just be with everyone as they uh, move into the rest of this evening, give them rest on tonight. God bless their tomorrows. Lord, just keep them safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we give Dr. Hayes a hand? Facilitating <laughs> tonight's Cafe Mana session. And just so you know, Dr. Hayes, uh, there are people on Facebook who said this was confirmation for them. So thank you for uh, leading tonight's session and for uh, just reminding us, number one, of God's love, but number two, that we are to be conduits of love. And so make sure, because this is our challenge. So when Dr. Hayes asks us next month, we don't want to be like we did with resilience. Uh, we want to be able to talk about how we responded to the love challenge unconditional approval, non-judgmental, loyalty, reassurance, patience, just the way you are. I'm going to keep that one and put that over my uh, headboard so I can, uh, uh, independence of mind. Okay, so I can keep that one too. All right, so we thank God for everybody who's been on Facebook. Y'all have been chiming in. They were participating in the true false questions uh, I was trying to use Zooms. You can load and stack the questions, but that didn't seem to work too well for us. The first one, the second one worked out okay. Uh, so I'll just go back to the you know one one step at a time thing, and uh, so we don't run into that issue again. Uh, but please remember, you all go to hotsministries.com and sign up for the email list. Everybody on Facebook, please share this on your timeline. Uh, invite people to Cafe Mana and don't open no videos on Facebook, no links, <laughs> just to call a person and ask them, did you send me a link? And if they say no, don't open it, delete it. Uh, and, and no just, emails either. And no, no emails either. That's right. right. That's where I got in trouble. But we do thank God and I'm gonna get you out on time. But we do live in a wonderful day and age. And God chose us. This is Natanya preached. So, you know, when the pastor come up, he got to preach his sermon too when somebody trying to take his pulpit. But uh, but but for real, <laughs> I've been thinking about this. God chose us to be alive in this day and age. So if we're alive in this time, we're equipped for it. We may not have a Bible to talk about Gail and Gerald and Michelle and Crystal and all they did during this time, but no, this is our moment. And so we have been called yes. to the kingdom for such a time as this. So let me bless you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in Jesus name. We will see everybody on next Thursday. God bless you.